Hi, I'd like to ask for your permission to use this video for educational purpose on the yes. internet. Tell me about your life before the surgery. Well, I don't think I really realized how much I hadn't been doing. Mm -hmm. And so I really watched what I was doing. I could hardly lift anything and my back hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. So life is good after the surgery because mm -hmm. I can I can lift things. I am very careful about mm -hmm. what I lift still, but I can lift things and as long as I try not to do it too too heavy, mm -hmm. then I can actually walk without being bent over. And um, that's probably my biggest. Let's talk about still before the surgery. You know, one to ten, how bad was the pain? Well, when it was bad, it was a ten. A and ten. I mean, well, I'd on. have to go sit down and lay yeah. down and probably take a muscle relaxant and just to get rid of the pressure and the pain and the sciatic nerve pain and things like that. How long did you struggle with that pain? Well, I've had it for 12 years off and on, mm -hmm. but the last year and a half, probably the last year before I had the surgery, it was, I struggled. Yeah, just. and we noticed inside, you know, you weren't imagining it. The bone was on bone, the, the, many of the discs were gone, your spine was side bending, you had the scoliosis. And that you had a major problem before the surgery, so your your pain was very un, well understandable. Now, in the, that in that twelve years, or maybe in the last two years before the surgery, what did you do for this pain? What, what, uh, how did you get uh, over everyday activities and so on? Well, pretty much, I lived on Advil mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Tylenol. I tried not to take muscle relaxants but when mm -hmm. I would I called it tweaking my back so mm -hmm. if I would lift wrong then I would have to either go to chiropractor physical therapy mm -hmm. or I would go back to the doc and I would get mm -hmm. some type of muscle relaxant and um, take those for probably a week or two and then I'd be pretty good and then it didn't take a whole lot to set it off again and did you see I, any surgeon uh, before you see me I had not seen a surgeon for mm -hmm. about 12 years and I fell on black ice is how I broke okay. my back to begin with and okay. I saw the surgeon probably six months or so after that and um, and he just he's like this never goes away it was a spondylolisthesis okay and he yeah, said, it's just gonna get worse you might want to think about having it done before it comes emergent mm -hmm. and not a whole lot it was traditional I'm gonna cut you this way we're mm -hmm. gonna put rods and he didn't really go into a lot of detail with me about what he was gonna do mm -hmm. it was just the way it was and then he said you're also gonna do you're not gonna do anything for 90 days and then you'll start physical therapy then you start physical therapy and after 90 days after 90 days he explain to you why no he pretty much said mm -hmm. this was his standard procedure. It was. Mm -hmm. it's just, but he's realistic. He was realistic I about think that he was. because amount of the damage we cause in a regular open surgery, we literally fill we open, and we have to wait until those muscles they lose their spasm, before we can effectively use the rest of whatever is left. Because when we cut the muscle, we kill them. We die, they die, and we wait until uh, after open surgery where we fill we open. We wait until the spasm goes away before you effectively can do anything. That's true. <laughs> yeah, and uh, now, uh, but you told me about, uh, you know, when I told you, then we met, we went through all the steps and so on. How did you hear about us? Well, my son is a physical therapist, mm -hmm. and um, they were actually... A yeah, good one, I mean. <laughs> uh, well. So he was starting a relationship mm -hmm. with yourself, um, mm -hmm. what services they could offer in Alexandria, mm -hmm. and my back had went out, and he mm -hmm. just said, would you be willing to drive? It's a, it's a drive mm -hmm. for me to come yeah. here. I It's probably three and a half hours if I just drive straight to come mm -hmm. and see you. And he, and he just explained who you were, that you did non-invasive back surgery, mm -hmm. and would I be willing to make that drive and, and that you. is that is a first of all thank you for taking the time and driving but that is a common story that people who look at our data i showed him and his group actually our data what the impact is of what we are doing every time i show that and the, this is people uh, are so impressed with the result with the data that they are willing to go the extra mile and an extra nine miles and you know encourage their families to have spine problem to come and see us that happens all the time people who understand the data they truly uh, understand that what uh, we are doing is very different than what's out there now you said you still were a little distressed that when we talked about that you need a surgery tell me about it well you had given me a back injection and i've had enough i have osteoarthritis mm -hmm. so i've had enough other injections to know it didn't last 
maybe six days. But we still tried the, all the other treatment and before we, the surgery. We did, and it didn't yeah. work. But in my mind, I was thinking I was coming back to see you, mm -hmm. even though you'd been clear. We have to try this. If mm -hmm. it doesn't work, it looks like a candidate for surgery. Mm -hmm. So when you told me in January of last year that the steroid therapy had failed and, and your physical therapies failed and you're going to need back surgery. I was in disbelief at that time because mm -hmm. I've had that bad back for so long. So I just thought, well, I'll just get another injection mm -hmm. and away I'll go. Even though in the back of my mind, I knew that wasn't going to mm -hmm. happen. So, um, yeah. And that is what something what we do. See, um, open wound fashion surgery is so damaging, so risky. Sometimes we just push it out as far as we can. And our patients are losing years, are using productivity. They are losing literally their, their social life because we put the threshold very high to offer them surgery with us because our surgery is so much less risky. Um, we put people, yeah, through another course of conservative management, but this is a time-limited thing. So once we are sure that that's not working, there's no reason to push it out. We go and take care of it now. We did the surgery about four and a half, five months ago. Correct. And uh, contrary to uh, what people think, I don't always put my best results out there. You had that nerve irritation. Tell me about it. How did it feel? <clears throat> well, about four days after post-op mm -hmm. surgery, um, which really actually wasn't too bad, but mm -hmm. I started getting severe burning sensation, and it started in my lower left mm -hmm. side of my back, and then it would wrap around and go down the front of my left leg. That is the L4 nerve root. It's for, uh, until it got mm -hmm. to the knee, but um, and I know you'd explained to me four times that that could possibly mm -hmm. happen, and I've only associated sciatic nerve pain mm -hmm. with that. I didn't associate, I didn't know what firing mm -hmm. nerves meant, but it is like you're on fire, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do for it. Mm -hmm. until you put me on a med called gabapentin. Gabapentin, yeah. And then gradually were working up to it, that took care of it. But that was that was terrible, and I, and I think people need to recognize that yeah. all right away, that that's what they're experiencing, yeah. because I did not... Now, let me show you first what we did. We did a... You had a scoliosis. First of all, your scoliosis is corrected. And here is the picture from the surgery that we did. All these screws are in perfect position. They are, look at that. The screw is barely bigger than structure it has to go through, but it's dead center. And all of the screws are good. And bone, four and a half months later, already growing. Look at that, how solid the bone is here in the middle of the, that space of bone is growing. But as well, I could see here that, look at that. The, in the back, bone is solidly growing. In some places, better than the other. But the fusion is actually there for an F1. At the open surgery, that process takes at least 9 to 12 months. But with our surgery, because we don't disturb the tissue, it, that is much faster. How long did you stay in the hospital? I stayed two, two nights. nights. I had the surgery on a Thursday, and I stayed Thursday night and Friday night and was discharged on Saturday, Saturday morning. morning. Now, four days after, you had this uh, pain going down the leg, and the reason you had it uh, a few days after the surgery is because... I numb all the tissue and the nerve at the surgery, and that is how long it takes for your body getting rid of the medication. So, and if you remember, we talked about that three, four days after the discharge, pain can get worse sometimes, and that exactly happened. Now, we put you on the gabapentin, and you told me that that helped you, but that's some side effect. Tell me about that. Well, the gabapentin worked really well. It's a med that you increase mm -hmm. the dose on until you get your maximum dosage. But what I noticed... Perfect. You said you nailed it. It's not a medication that you take only when you have symptoms. You take it uh, constantly and build up a dose, and you go slowly up, you go slowly down. Please continue. Yes. Yeah, so um, I was on, t I think it was 2,700 milligrams. It was three big capsules three times a day. 900 three times a day. Correct. Yes. And... Um, but what I noticed is that it started messing with my mind, for a bet, lack of better words, mm -hmm. and I had a very difficult time remembering things. If I could talk to you and say something to you, and I would re I would probably walk out the door and forget it, but if you brought it to my attention, I would remember it. Typical but side to effect. execute, yeah. I couldn't do that. As well, some people tell me that, you know, uh, especially if you go rapidly up and down, that um, the blood pressure becomes a little labile and, you know, they get lightheadedness and so on and concentration. That's all that that's is because your brain doesn't get enough blood supply because it changes how your body regulates 
blood pressure, among other things. And so this is a typical side effect of gabapentin. It, it worked really well. So I um, had really started doing my physical therapy, and my goal was to try mm -hmm. to start reducing it at 90 days just to mm -hmm. see if I could because I worked so hard yeah. on my physical therapy to try to make me stronger. And, and oh, the physical therapist yeah. actually focused on a lot of nerve exercises to yeah. do to try to get those nerves to calm down and that How was long really did it take for that nerve to calm down? Well, I started to wean off. You started me on gabapentin the last week of June and mm -hmm. I started to wean off of them. I started in September and I was successful about the middle of October. So it took mm -hmm. me a month to wean off of gabapentin mm -hmm. okay. and I didn't realize it does produce, it can produce some withdrawal syndrome yeah, syndromes okay. and I did it but slow. But, but still, yeah, I still did. I yeah. had I was headachy and body achy yeah. for about four days. No, mm -hmm. if you remember, we as well talked about in big surgeries like that. Most of the time, not in the first month, but in the second month is when my most of my patients noticed the most of the changes, most of the improvement. Was that the case with you as well? That most the, the first month was rough, but the second month you started getting better. My first three weeks were rough, and mm -hmm. then I started getting better mm -hmm. and. Um, Increasing, I think what mm -hmm. helped me is really working closely. I don't know mm -hmm. that I was ever without exercise plan. Mm -hmm. um, and even today, I discharge from my local hometown, but I still have a, a PT package that mm -hmm. I have to do all these exercises with. Yeah. So that's how I started just to get better, and they started focusing. And so, yeah, about the second month is yeah. where I really started noticing I could increase my walking distance. And before it got really cold, I was up to three miles a day walking. What about going back to work? How does that feel? I went back to work at eight weeks. I probably could have went back to work based on just physical signs after mm -hmm. probably six weeks. But the gabapentin really did mess mm -hmm. with my head, and I just couldn't concentrate yeah. and focus. Yeah. So I took an extra two weeks of full time, and then I went back for two weeks mm -hmm. part time. And but you were within two months back to work. Yeah. After a surgery like that, the uh, average return to work is somewhere between four and eight months. That's average. So we cut practically your recovery, even with our difficult start, because most of my patients don't have that nerve irritation. Even with difficult start, we cut the return to work to one third to one half of what is open surgery you would expect here. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I have a housekeeper I, mm -hmm. at my you place of business. That, yeah. yeah, and she, she had one level done, mm -hmm. and she came back 90 days mm -hmm. later and then just started physical therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, she had it with the doc I had seen 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, and she struggled mm -hmm. for a while after yeah, that. Comparing yourself to her, what do you think, what's the advantage of that's minimally invasive, what you got comparing to the surgery she got? Well, I didn't, she was in a lot of pain, so she had talked to mm -hmm. me. I called her, and she called me mm -hmm. right away after she'd had that surgery, and she was in tears. She had to go to the emergency room and get pain meds to handle her pain. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to do any of that, even though I had the nerve issues that came later. Yeah. As far as the actual back pain, I honestly would never have called and asked for any additional pain mm -hmm. meds or anything like that because I didn't need them. I needed just the... the Med and most of our patients without the nerve irritation are exactly as you described. But you know, the, the, and then the, the return to life and activities, if you compare yourself to your friend with the open old fashioned surgery, what do you think was the difference is from the knowledge you uh, uh, got from her? I already know I'm doing really good okay, compared okay. to other people because yeah. I had some, my daughter in law's friend, her, her mm -hmm. mother had had. Um, back surgery I think traditional back surgery maybe a month or two before I did and I was already walking three miles a day and she said she, her mother was at that time was mm -hmm. 90 I was doing two miles a day her mother was 90 days out she was walking from the yeah. Davenport to the kitchen and that's mm -hmm. all she could do and I'm yeah. like and how far out is she oh. I was really <laughs> surprised how did you how you walking very good and um mm -hmm. I had years because of the scoliosis of I was bent over all the time, mm -hmm. plus I do a desk job. And so when I walk, I have to practice gait training in my mind. So it's always heel-toe, yeah. heel-toe. Then I started 
eyes to the sky or when I'm outside, meaning I should be able to see the horizon, mm -hmm. not bent it's over. It's a training. You have to it get used is. to that, yeah. It's very hard when you're used to being bent over all the time. Mm. And so I, I didn't increase my walking past three miles. Instead, mm. I focused on better gait training, better walking, better balance. Oh, three miles is a lot. And, um, I'm not sure. I didn't have back surgery. I'm not sure if I can walk three miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I've always been an avid. I used to be an yeah. avid runner, and then I was a power walker. Mm -hmm. So that was very important yeah. to me. No, but no, I just I'm felt until spring, that. I will stay at three miles. Now, in a surgeon life, there are certain things. Obviously, we get lots of satisfaction about the good results and so on. But there are some things that uh, they are not uh, put in medical books and so on. And that is, you told me your son, Nick, who's a physical therapist, a good one, who sees lots of this problem, who sent you to us. Just uh, hugged you and tell you, told you something. Tell me about it. Oh, that. that's right. What happened? So I hadn't seen him since August, and I went there in um, mm -hmm. the first part of August, and I went there for Halloween, and I just had kind of joked around with the physical therapist, mm -hmm. your job is to make sure I can stand up straight mm -hmm. so my son, the PT, doesn't notice that <laughs> I'm bent over. So I was always worried I was going to get out of my vehicle, and he was yep. going to say, you're worse than when I saw you last time. And I forgot about that. So a couple things happened that weekend. As soon as I got out, he came and gave me a big bear hug, and he's like, I cannot believe how straight and tall you're standing, and I, I was like, wow, that's so good to hear, and then when I had stayed with him after the surgery, mm -hmm. he has a park really close by, and I had a wheeled walker, and we would walk the dogs and walk mm -hmm. all the time in that park, mm -hmm. so my granddaughter and I were walking the dogs, minus a walker, in October, mm -hmm. And I was telling her it felt so weird to walk that park without my wheeled walker. Yeah. And she's so innocent. She turned to me and she goes, and Grandma, you're standing so much straighter than you were when you were walking before. So that was and, a big thing. And moment like that is giving a surgeon like me truly meaning to what we do. Mm -hmm. Because in the med school, in the residency and so on, we are made to be mechanics, good mechanics, people mechanics. We are trained uh, you know to separate the emotion from the mechanical side but once everything is done this the kind of stories are actually what give meaning to all that 23 years of education i went through to be able to with a surgery that it was with barely one and a half hour give you back to your family a surgery that uh, for in any other way would have been like an eight hour surgery a 12 month recovery time and way more complicated complicated and so on but uh, I think these stories that we don't learn to deal with in the med school is actually what gives our job really meaning. So thank you for sharing that. Well, thanks for the surgery. I am so, I'm so happy. People yeah. ask me that all the time, would you do this again? Mm -hmm. And I always say I would never wish the nerve pain on mm -hmm. even my worst enemy, but I am so thankful that I had the surgery done because I'm so much better than oh, I was. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the interview.